it repeatedly asks me to enter a non-empty string and at some point if I try three tries or whatever the original value of n is, if I try so many tries and every time I enter just the empty string, it gives up on me. So if n is no longer greater than 0, if this counter n counts down all the way down to 0, then I won't go into the if condition and I will simply return the empty string on line 7. So once again, try this out and see if you believe what I just said, that this function tries n times and if you don't specify an n, the default value is 3. So it tries n times asking the user to input a non-empty string. And if the user does input a non-empty string within n tries, it returns that string. And if the user repeatedly enters empty string for all n attempts, then it will actually just return the empty string. Now we have seen several instances where we have been able to convert recursion into iteration. And here it's very clear how we would like that to proceed. When we get to this line, we are going to be calling a fresh instance of this mystery function, which means that control is going to jump back to the top, but in a fresh instance of the function, and then we're going to continue. Now, this clearly seems wasteful. Why can't we just loop back to this point in the same instance of this function? Why do we have to create a brand new instance? We want to basically come back here, but with the value n being one smaller. Well, that's simple to do. We can just replace this return mystery n minus 1 with this statement, n minus equals 1. And now we want a way to come back here and redo this if condition. We really don't want to waste resources by creating a brand new instance of the mystery function. So if we want to do an if condition many times, it's very simple to do this in Python. We just simply replace if with while. So while n is bigger than 0, meaning as long as n is bigger than 0, do this. And when you have finished doing the body of the while loop, that is everything that is indented one level with respect to the while, when you have finished doing that, this will loop back to the top. So the while loop is a repeated if statement. Let me show this to you once again with a flowchart. So here is how we would normally write an if condition. We write if some condition and then a series of statements that are indented. And then let us say there's some other statements. And we already know how control flows in this structure. We first check if this condition is true or false. Let us suppose it is true. Then control flows into the if condition and we do all the statements in the indented block. Now, once we are done with these statements, assuming there aren't any return-like statements, control will continue to flow and then we will do the other statements. This is what happens if the condition is true. What happens if the condition is false? Well, if this condition is false, we know that we immediately skip to the other statements, which we can represent diagrammatically like this. Now, when we change this if statement to a while statement, once again we have some condition. Once again, we will first evaluate that condition. Once again, if that condition is false, we will skip past this and go to the other statements. And if the condition is true, we will do the indented block. The big difference is we will no longer flow automatically into the other statements this portion is not going to happen. And instead, after we have done the indented block, assuming there are no return statements or break statements like we saw with for loops, then we will loop back to the top. And we will retest the condition. So we will keep coming back to this condition each time we are done with the indented block. Please remember, we will also test this condition at the very beginning 
before entering the indented block for the first time. But each time we finish the indented block, we will loop around and retest the condition. And we will keep doing this while the condition is true. Meaning, we will keep doing this as long as the condition is true. As soon as this condition becomes false, we will continue to whatever statements are outside the while loop that are not indented in the body of the while loop. So this is how a while loop works. It's useful to think of a while loop as a repeated if. Now our friend comes along and says, why do we even need a while loop? Our friend knows that it's possible to rewrite this code using a for loop. Let's just first take a look at this interesting syntax that our friend has used. This is an interesting convention. Remember, normally we put a variable over here. Our friend has used an underscore. Many professional programmers use this. The underscore is a legal variable name, but a convention that programmers have adopted is they try to avoid this as the choice of a variable name unless it is for a specific purpose. You see here, what we want to do is we want to repeat this body n times. The way we will do it is by looping in range of n. Remember, range of n will take the values 0, 1, 2, up to n minus 1. But we really don't care about the exact value 0 and the exact value 1 and so on. So the convention that programmers use, which is what our friend has used here, is if you don't really care about that value, use the variable name underscore. Of course, it's meaningless, but it's very easy for us to recognize that this is basically do n times. So n times, we will read the input. And if that input is non-empty, if that string is truthy, then we will return it. And otherwise, we will continue trying again. And when we run out of inputs to try, then we will return the empty string. So our friend is saying, well, why do we need a while statement? We can certainly do this with a for loop. And yes, when you can write code with a for loop, I strongly encourage you to do that. It often leads to code that is easier to read and easier to maintain. But we will also see there are examples when a while loop is necessary. Let's now take a look at those examples.